welcome to another episode of Grey Matter, the series of science shorts that talks all things brain and cracks all things cranium. This month, Split has hit our cinemas, with James McAvoy playing a kidnapper who has 24 separate personalities. The film is based on a very real medical condition called Split Personality Disorder, or more properly known as Dissociative Identity Disorder. Dissociative Identity Disorder is defined as a mental health condition where a patient shows at least two distinct personalities associated with memory loss as well. These personalities can be very different. In fact, there's a woman in her 20s who has several different personalities, one of them being that of a 10-year-old boy. All of the personalities can be very different, showing different traits, even having different handwriting and different voices. All of the personalities occur at different times, and one personality won't necessarily know what the other personality's got up to, so it's important that they communicate. So what causes the different personalities in dissociative identity disorder? Well, they're widely argued, but it's mainly thought that dissociative identity disorder is a reaction to trauma or stress. Dissociative identity disorder mainly presents itself in childhood, and people who have the condition often report that they have experienced traumatic events in their childhood. It's argued that dissociative identity disorder is a form of PTSD that's found in children. Instead of the typical flashbacks and anxiety seen in PTSD, it's thought that due to increased imagination, children will form different personalities to cope with a traumatic event. For example, one personality may be stronger and tougher, and that personality may present itself when the patient needs to find a way of coping with a stressful event. In terms of brain activity, some links between dissociative identity disorder and the orbitofrontal cortex have been made. This part of the brain plays a role in mediating behaviours, regulating emotions, and the development of sense of self. Some think that by experiencing a traumatic event in your childhood, this could affect the developing orbitofrontal cortex and this could then lead to you having an effective sense of self. And there's some research to support the idea that dissociative identity disorder is a form of PTSD seen in children, because some of the neurology underlying dissociative identity disorder is similar to that seen in PTSD in adults. We often see a smaller hippocampus and amygdala in patients with PTSD, and this is also present in people with dissociative identity disorder. The hippocampus is a brain region associated with memory, and the amygdala is associated with memory and emotion regulation. So that's it for this week's episode of Grey Matter. If you'd like to learn more about dissociative identity disorder, there's some useful links in the description, and stay tuned for next time.